Good evening, everyone. And welcome to St. Andrew's Church uh, for this penultimate concert in this year's Ashburton Chamber Music Festival. Um, who's been to one of the other ones already? Quite a few. Who's, who's not been to any yet? First time, so quite a few of you as well. Um, and does anybody not know this week's drama? This week's uh, this week's drama uh, on Wednesday, Seb Van Kuyk, uh, our fantastic cellist who'd been rehearsing already for five and a half days, um, got a message on Wednesday morning saying that his mother was gravely ill in a hospital in Paris, so he had to be go to be with her, which he did, uh, um, which left us with a string quartet minus, well, a cello, so a string trio, um, for which we hadn't planned. Um, so. Wednesday night's concert was somewhat uh, rearranged and we did find the local cellist who sat in with it for a couple of the pieces, but um, much of this year's program is, uh, is extremely complicated, difficult music, um, and we were very lucky on Wednesday afternoon to track down um, Cecilia Bignall, who has joined us. Uh, she arrived after five, five hours of driving on Thursday morning um, and uh, is an absolute star um, and has fitted in perfectly and we are back on track with one exception which is that uh, Seb was a key part of leading the Ligeti Quartet which was on the program uh, so we we're unable to make that happen in his absence so we're replacing that in tonight's program with the Shostakovich Quartet which I hope doesn't disappoint anyone. Um, too much if it does see me later <laughs> so tonight's program so Shostakovich isn't the best thing to begin with so we're going to put that at the end uh before that in the second half will be the Kapustin cello and saxophone duo uh with uh, me and Cecilia and then the first half uh, is going to begin with the Haydn quartet uh and then we will have it's billed as a world's premiere. It's actually the second performance because last night was its first public performance. It's this brand new string quartet written by Mike Greenway, uh, Mitch Newell Remains, um, inspired by the story of fossils in the 
caves not far from here near Buckfastley uh, and Joint and Mitnor were the people who discovered those anyway there's a whole story about that uh, which is explained in your program notes which I hope you all have so um, I think that's all I need to say um, tonight uh, we don't want to be disturbed by mobile phones so can you please make sure that yours are silent or off um, uh, if anyone was, was looking at the photos on the way in, um, those were taken by Mark Burley of Shearwood Gallery just down in town. He's, um, I, hope, I think he's taken some amazing pictures during the course of the last few days, which will probably be on show in there if you're interested. Um, so I should welcome to the stage we have on violins, Stefan Hirsch from Chicago, the first time he's been with us here, and Sarah Tricky on violin who has been with us every year since we've been in 2019. Then on viola, David Yang, who started this whole thing. He's come over from Philadelphia once again. I should mention that his daughter, Eliane Yang, will be with us again to do a recital in the autumn in November, if it, my memory serves me right. Um, amazing cellist. Um, she'll be here later this year. Um, and then finally, Cecilia Bignall, as I mentioned, on cello. Please give them a warm welcome to the stage. Good evening, everyone. It's lovely for us to be back in this church, at least for, for David and me, and hopefully it's lovely for the others to be here for the first time. And um, we're going to start, as Andy said, with the high to Opus 20, number three. We have Allegro con Spirito, and then we have a minuet, followed by a poco adagio, and then tonight. Thank you. 
I think Mike is not with us tonight, is that correct? Correct. Yes. He is with us at the other end of this camera. Oh, okay. Hey, Mike. <laughs> um, Fully in spirit, I'm sure. So there are, there are program notes that describe the, uh, the genesis of this piece, but I want to talk just a little bit about it. First of all, thanks to Mike, for Mike Greenway, for writing this. Uh, Mike is a friend and a colleague, a wonderful composer, guitar player, world traveler. Um, don't forget the oh, cook. Cook. amazing cook. cook. Oh, my God. Yeah, now we're going to be thinking about the food the whole time. Um, and uh, it's interesting what he's done with this piece because it, it so Mint No Remains, for those of you who haven't read the program notes, although maybe of you already have, but basically the whole bunch of animals about 100,000 years ago fell into a, a local sinkhole. Uh, I guess there were woolly mammoths and saber toothed tigers and all sorts of things like that, maybe a sloth, <laughs> something. Um, and uh, they became entombed in the sinkhole. And, uh, and then over time, the, the bones were discovered, uh, I think sometime in the early 20th century, and they just thought that these were bones, nothing particularly important. Uh, they went to a museum, a local museum somewhere. I'm sure this is all in the notes, and maybe I'm getting this all wrong. Um, but, uh, but it's so much fun. <laughs> <laughs> but subsequently, they discovered that these bones were, in fact, uh, you know, hundreds, hundreds of thousands of years old and quite important. Um, and subsequently, someone stole the bones. Uh, I don't really know how you steal a, a woolly mammoth bones. Uh, you must have a crew of several men, a whole truck. Uh, but the Netflix miniseries is coming. <laughs> <laughs> So, I don't know, Russian mafia involved? Is there, is there I don't know, maybe <laughs> Chinese medicine or something? But, um, but what's interesting about the piece is it, it deals with issues of time, not only biological time, uh, you, know, the, the, uh, you know, from a paleontological point of view, but also human time and our perception of time. And... Uh, the way he chose to realize this in the piece is through multiple time signatures, or which aren't apparent from looking at the part, but go through. All of us are moving at various different speeds. And you can hear the story in the piece of the animals kind of grazing, walking around, and then falling into the hole, uh, and then uh, becoming, again, entombed there. And an ice age ensues, and then the bones are discovered by humans. And then they're stolen, but then they're uh, restored. They, they made a, a scan of the bones and, and reproduced them. Uh, so it ends, it's a happy ending. For the, well, maybe not for the animals, but for the bones. Yes. So uh, <laughs> it's been amazing to work on this piece. Uh, and uh, here it is, Mitnoor Remains. Oh, wait, do we want to talk about our conductor? Oh, yes. And we, so, so we wouldn't be able to do this because of the multiple time signatures meters, uh, because again, it looks easy, but then we start playing, it's like, oh my god. Uh, and, and fortunately, Tom Vigneri, our, our, the composer of, of uh, Walk With Me, which you guys have heard this week a few times, and we'll hear tomorrow also. Uh, thankfully, Tom stepped up and is guiding us through the piece, so thank you very much. Composers remain.
Ladies and gentlemen, here at Angel for 15 minutes or so. There's a bar at the back. If anybody needs the loo, go out of the door and up to the church hall, and it's open and the toilets are up there. Uh, I think that's all I need to say. Come back soon and get a drink. Thank you. Just ask me that in the background on free. Look, who's in the old? Can you see your mum and dad there? They're somewhere there. Where they are. If you're there, Andy, I'm, I'm, I'm on video now. Because I can hear you on the mic.
put it back together to get it to the tomorrow. How was that? Yeah, good. I bought this one last This is the last form of company. Oh, okay. They're just going to do like, favorite stuff. When is it? Five. Yeah. Okay. What, you want to? Yeah. How long Clever boy. You're a clever boy. Can't get anything past you. You're too clever. Yeah. Yeah, maybe we can work that out. The whole power is just not clean. Yes, yes. I'm just going like that the whole time. It's too much Oh, very cool. Taking the stand. We'll Andy, hopefully, see you later. Yeah. Good luck on yeah, the Hi. Hey, um, we're back at Chili's later. That's what I was thinking of, yes. See that? Yeah, cheers. Yeah. yeah, they are probably good. Thank you very much. Thank you, Gordon. Good to see you. Nice to see you. Thank you very much for the evening. Oh, yeah. It is quite an extraordinary piece, yes, exactly. It's, uh, it's, and it's great when you know the, the idea behind it as well. Okay, that's true. So, Yes. The tempo? The dimension? Yes. 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 One more? It would have to be. Yeah, yeah, it's, uh, you'd have to have headphones and click tracks because everybody's doing different things in different places. I mean, they, they come together often, as you heard, but finding each other throughout that journey is so hard. So they said, hey, Tom. <laughs> And you write it through with them the first. Okay. Well, they'd already They're played it. I had to kind of read it on the fly. But yeah. I had some time to and then score it. What a team then everybody is. Yes, exactly. That's right. And, you know, our cellist is new and all the rest. So, yes. I mean, and they're, they're really coming together in the course of three days. Cheers. Well, we've got to peel off, I'm afraid. <laughs> yes, in a week or so. Okay, my chest. Cheers, Gordon.
Yeah. Well, both pieces were terrific. Very different. But, uh, yeah, it's great. great. Yeah, I mean, brand new piece, second time. And now, and now you will be. Yeah. <laughs> I think the way you jump up there is terrific. Well. Pretty good, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> there
going to get started. Welcome back, and uh, we're going to begin the second half with this piece, the duet for cello and alto saxophone by Kapustin, Nikolai Kapustin, who, as I'm sure you've read, was born in Ukraine, uh, although spent most of his life in uh, Soviet Russia. Uh, he was born in 1937 um, and uh, died just a few years ago. Um, this piece was written around 2020, I think. No, two, around 2000, if, give or take. Um, and there are three movements in it. The first one, Allegretto. Second one, Grave. And the third one is a Sonatina. Um, and although Capuzin didn't know that he was a chess composer because he writes everything down, there's no, no, nothing improvised here, at least there's not supposed to be. Um, uh, but it, so all the notes are written, but he's undoubtedly really influenced by jazz writers and jazz performers. Um, someone who was at uh, the performance week the first time we played this at uh, Bremridge the other night, uh, he has a box set of Charlie Parker recordings. Of, well, they're, they're not the commercial recordings uh, that this guy did that have been released, uh, which I've never heard, but as he listened, he says as he was listening, he heard those tapes in this music, which does not surprise me at all because it's, it's very much of that Charlie Parker bebop style, but with a cello accompaniment instead of a rhythm section. The cello is being both a rhythm section but also uh, a, um, is introducing a whole different ingredient. And we're hearing that today played by Cecilia Bignall. We might just beat it. We'll see.
So the next piece on the program, the last piece on the program, is Shostakovich's 13th String Quartet. Um, it's, a, it's an extraordinary work, a very, very late work, and kind of a, a deeply, deeply personal work for him, and uh, kind of a cri de coeur of sorts. Um, it is through composed, so there are no movements, it's just all one large movement.
very much, everybody. Thank you to the musicians. Thank you to the quartet. Thank you all for coming tonight. Uh, we have one finale of this festival, uh, which uh, is tomorrow at 5 o'clock at the Art Centre, which is the highlights of the festival, which have all yet to be chosen completely. But uh, a few things might have slipped in from the very first night uh, when some extra things that weren't advertised or some Bartok, some Bartok duets that were performed. That was, um, this was on Wednesday when we had, uh, Seb had left. Um, and it might, I think we might hear a few more of those. Um, there's also a bit of Dvorak, American quartet, likely to be uh, If we can bear it, maybe a bit of Kapustin <laughs> sax and cello again. Not the whole thing, but a little bit. Um, and other things, if anyone has any urgent requests that you really want to, that you think should be in tomorrow, come and talk to me or David and uh, let us know. But um, yeah, thank you once again, and uh, I hope it's not too wet out there. And, do come again or we'll send your friends or both tomorrow at five o'clock and we will finish this whole thing off for another year. Thank you very much. And on Wednesday night there's a great Scottish folk singer coming to the art center. <laughs> Gosh. I arrived thinking it would be the Haydn, but 
I like the two contemporary pieces, actually. Uh, and in fact, it's just kind of bit. Yeah, so it, I enjoyed the whole thing. Yeah, no, it's wonderful. Thank you very much. Sleep well. <laughs> Yeah. Uh -huh. 